morning. Praise God for ministering and dancing and song and praise everything this morning. Um, something about the season is just, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. So it's just something about just worshiping and praising God and sanctuary and just being a part of the life and just bring you to a seat to worship him. So I'm going to go into prayer, Father God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, oh God, for who you are, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for just coming to this world. We thank you, God, for sending your only begotten Son. We thank you for continuing to keep us and to remind us that you haven't forgotten about us. And that you're still doing your thing, oh God, in our lives and for your people and for this earth, oh God. We know, Lord, that you are present. And we just ask that you would have your way, Lord. Hide me behind your cross. If they won't hear me, they won't see me, but they hear you. And that you, oh God, will speak to your people through me. I thank you, Lord, for the word. I thank you, oh God, for just being here today and being able to stand before you. And Jesus, name I pray. Amen. So I thank God for being here this morning. And I thank God for waking me up this morning. On time, just on time. <laughs> I thank God for waking me up because I stayed up too late. I don't know if anybody else did that, but sometimes, you know, I stay up too late and then I pay for it in the morning. I don't want to go too bright. I don't know, I just get wind up at night and that's the time when I should go to bed. But God woke me up this morning <laughs> in my right mind. Had we started out going into the house of the Lord. Thank God for uh, just being here and being his child. And I'm just grateful. I'm very grateful today uh, just to be alive. I used to say that before when I first got sober and God delivered me uh, from drugs and alcohol. I used to always say, thank God, I'm alive. And I saw a lot of people dying around me, but God kept me. And he delivered me. And now I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, passing and Things going on. I'm saying it again to myself, Lord, thank God I'm alive. Another day, another day's journey that I will have another opportunity to serve you. Yes. So I'm grateful today. Yes. I'm grateful to be in this church. I'm grateful to be under good leadership. I thank God for our pastor, our Reverend Dr. Richard Wright Sr. Amen. 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 I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be under his leadership and our first lady uh, of Reverend Vivian L. Wright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I learned a lot since I've been in this church. Yeah. I've been here since 2006. We moved here in 2005. I came here in 2006. And I've been here ever since. And I thank God that God sent me this way. I thank God for our pastor and let and his wife, our first lady, is mm-hmm. yeah. my father's parent. <laughs> oh, I thank God for him and my godfather. Amen. Yeah. And also my husband, my uh, prince. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for my prince. He put this in me. I thank God for that too. I need that. You know, if they say you, you get somebody like you, I don't always work out. I think we have some opposites that work better. You know, he strengthens me and I strengthen him in certain areas. And that's the blessing that God has blessed us with over 25 years, you know? So I thank God for that. Um, each and every one of you, I told you, I knew the road and that. I thank God for every last one of y'all in here, my sisters, my brothers, all of you. And and first I was saying, I had a word from the Lord. It was from Luke 1. In the song that they say, uh, Mary did you know? That's my song, I love that song. And uh, that's what we're going today. We're going to talk about Mary. Ain't that on time? Yeah. God orchestrates perfect, perfect time in everything he does. I'm a believer. So here in Luke 1, starting at the 26th verse. 
is the story about the birth foretold of Jesus. And this is what happened. It was a six month, Mary was pregnant, not Mary, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. She was pregnant six months. The angel came, Gabriel came to tell uh, Mary, tell Mary that uh, not only was her cousin pregnant, but that she was going to be pregnant too. And so once uh, she told her that, the angel told her that she, uh, she said this is a different kind of greeting. This kind of greeting was uh, that she was highly favored that the Lord was with her. And Mary was troubled at these words and wondering what kind of greeting this might have been because she had never heard anybody see her this way. But she was not afraid because she had found favor with God. And she told her, the angel told Mary, you'll conceive and give birth to a son and you'll be called him Jesus. And he will be great and be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. Which brings us to our focus verses. The topic for today is miracle. I still believe in miracle. And I'm asking you, do you still believe in miracle? How will this be, Mary? Asked the angel. Since I'm a virgin. And the angel is that the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I'm still saying, miracles still happen. And I believe that God is still in the miracle business. I'm a miracle. I believe in miracles. And I know what a miracle is. Because a miracle is an effect or extraordinary event in a physical world that surpasses all known human and natural power. It's described as a supernatural cause. Such an effect or event manifesting or considered as the work of God, a wonder, or a marvel. Some may say it's a revelation, a phenomenon, a rarity, a surprise. A stunner, or call it even unusualness. Why is it a miracle? Maybe because it's unexplainable. Our minds can't comprehend it, nor can science conclude a formula or prescribe a remedy to obtain such a solution. A miracle can happen to anyone. God is not a respecter of persons. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Just think about the life and how he saw fit to give us a miracle. How God made you a miracle. The Bible tells us about the miracles happening in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Do you remember some of them? Perhaps I should refresh your memory. How about the manna from heaven? The water from the rock? How about the parting of the Jordan River? The sun and the moon standing still. How about the death of Europe or the touching of the heart? Wow, we don't think about that as a miracle. But God said it's a miracle that it happened instantly. The destruction of the altar of Bethel. Also, the replenishing of the oil in the mill in Zarephan. The raising of the widow's son at Zarephan. God said, these are all miracles that I want you to record for my people. We read them and we know that these are things that occurred, but do we know that they're still a time today? Water is supplied to all. The multiplication of a widow's oil uh, happened then and it can happen now. The raising of the Shudamite son, he who said then, and God can raise someone today too. The feeding of the 100 with 20 loaves of bread. All of these are Old Testament uh, miracles that occur for things that God still does today. The dead man was raised by touching Elisha's bones. Jonah was released from the great fish. 
the three Jews walked around in the fiery furnace and they saw a fourth person. All of these things are happening still today. Daniel was delivered from the den of lions. He didn't die in the den. God brought him out. All of these things are still happening today. Aaron's rod is turned into a serpent. Ten plagues were against Egypt and some people stayed safe. Some people did not. All of this is happening today. God is still in the miracle business. He's still parting the Red Sea. He's still turning uh, all the things that weren't into what can be. The impossible into the possible. You know why I stayed up late? I was watching a movie called The Possible. And I was watching that movie. And some movies you just can't just turn it off. You got to see the end of the movie. Just like our life. Sometimes you can't just turn it off right there. Because the end is not yet done. Yeah. And God still has a miracle waiting for you at the end. The end of the movie, the, the family that was in the destruction and had uh, got separated because of the, the water and, and all the things that had happened in the movie. The uh, uh, family went on vacation and the, and the water came into the hotel and the family got all separated because of the destruction and the the land was all a, a mess because of the water. And the mother was with the son, and the mother was hurt, and the, and the father was with the other two sons, and they sort of came together. But the ending was the best. It's like the whole family got back together again. Isn't that what we want our prayer to end on? We want our whole family to be back together in heaven with us. So I thank God for that story because I thought about that. I said, wow, if we stop in the middle of where we are and we don't go all the way to the end, we miss what God has for us. We don't get the whole thing. We get part of it. We don't get our driver's license. We just get the book. So we got to take the whole thing. We got to go the whole process. Because the whole process will take us to what God can have us to do. How will it be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? Is the miracle in the virgin birth? Because many people think that the virgin, the person who never had a sexual intercourse or never knew a man or a woman, that this would be the, the miracle. That this right here will, will be where we would stop the story. Because Mary is worshipped by the Catholic Church. I grew up in the Catholic Church, so I can tell you that they believe in the Hail Mary. Okay. In many days, we had to say the Hail Mary. Okay. I didn't know why I was saying it. But they put us in this booth and, you know, we had to do our confession thing. And they say you say about 50 Hail Marys and you be all right. Okay. And so we did. <laughs> and so the Hail Mary went like this. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. And so we would say that, you know, as kids, and that's what we were taught in the religion of, of catech we say catechism. But that's what we were taught to do. So we believe that the miracle was in the virgin. Okay. Was in the virgin birth of Mother Mary. So we worship Mary, because Mary was put on a pedestal. Yep. And then we found out that a virgin means more than just a woman or a man who has to do with another. Uh -huh. A virgin means pure, undefiled, being without modification, not previously exposed or used, uh -huh. and without experience. Mm -hmm. For example, like oil obtained from olives by the first pressing, without application of heat, <laughs> just pure virgin olive oil. Uh -huh. Or is a miracle in the angel's response to Mary. Uh -huh. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Oh, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The Holy Spirit, you say, AKA, the Holy Ghost. Okay. The third part of the Trinity, not an it, but a he. Yeah, yeah. The Spirit of God, the uh, seven uh, gifts and attributes of the Holy Spirit. The wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, 
piety in the fear of the Lord. See that it works of the Holy Spirit through faithful, through the faithful. The Holy Spirit empowers us to give life and sustains us. It sustains life. The Holy Spirit is present with us right now. He gives power through life itself. He gives power for special services. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon God's people in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they were used by God to fulfill His purpose. The Holy Spirit empowers Christians for service in many ways. The five gifts of the Spirit, these abilities often turn characteristics of gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, increased faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, prophecy, and the discernment of spirit. The verse kinds of tongues and interpretation of the tongues, giving spiritual gifts to equip them for ministry. It's the hashtag, no new man. <laughs> we can have a need, pray, and God provides exactly what we need and exactly what we need. It. Abraham displayed this gift when he had no earthly reason to hope that God would keep his promise to give him an heir. He nevertheless continued to hope even in the passage of Mary's simple childlike trust that God would do the impossible and conceive a child in her virgin womb. The Holy Spirit empowers us because we are growing in our faith. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For the more we study, the more we study the Word of God, the more persuaded we will be that God is all powerful yes. and works in all yes. things according yes. to his perfect plan. Our vision of God will grow bigger yes. and know him nothing is impossible without God. Yes. Look for evidence of God's love and see his hand in our lives. Act in accordance with our faith and take bold risks for the kingdom of God. Yes. Building up the body of Christ and sharing the knowledge of faith, our belief in the power of God. Yeah. Miracles. Do you have humble confidence that God can do anything and everything? Right. Do, do you believe that he will act when others only see the obstacles in right. your way? Right. Do you believe in miracles? Is the miracle in the response to the angels or is the miracle in the response of Mary? Right. In the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The power of the Most High. Yes. For you, Lord, are Most High. Yes. Over all the earth, you are raised high over all the gods. God is the highest. There is no one higher. He is number one. Our number one Uno. Seven names of God give us a uh, a hint that he is the high, the holy one, the one that we have written in our word about, the El, the God, the Eliel, our God, the Eliem, our God, Shaddai, El Shaddai, the Almighty God, the I Am, the I Am God, the Tezah, the host, our God. And there are other names that we call him, but mostly those are titles because we have experienced miracles and things that he has done in our life that's given us examples of who we should call him. God overshadowed. When you look up overshadow, and you see what overshadow means, in the Webster doesn't mean what overshadow means to us in the strong concordance. In the strong concordance, overshadow talks about something leaving a natural result. Something that overshadows the present brings about a plan that comes to pass. It brings about God's innumerable will for our physical circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. A miracle. Yes. God is still in the miracle business. Yes. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High yes. will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. And I'll say to the Lord, 
You are my refuge and my fortune. My God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest smell and the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge and his faithfulness will be your shield and your answer. Miracles are not just at Christmas time. Miracles are happening every day. Jesus said that he is the reason for the season. Christmas is not just the season for miracles. Jesus is the reason for the season. Miracles. Do you believe in miracles? So the Holy One, to be born what we call the Son of God, is a miracle in response to the angel and the response that Mary gave. Or is it in both? The miracle is in both of the responses. I say both. You know how you have to check the answer? Yes, no, maybe? I say all of the above. <laughs> See, the Holy One to be born is holy. The supreme being, the so-called, uh, what we call uh, the way of emphasis is the one that's separated for the service of God. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, Jesus, the second person to the Trinity in the Christian theology. Jesus, the Son of God who came to the earth. How do we know that it was Jesus? Because he told us when he came to the earth. Jesus said, just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I am the Father of one. Jesus said, I'm a father. All things are possible to you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. In the word says, and again the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. God sent his only begotten son, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16, God wrote us this word. He showed us that this baby, this little baby that was coming through Mary's channel was the son of God. God wanted to insist this by us as a parent who didn't send only a begotten son through the whirlwind. So the Greek word does not begin or mean begotten or forgotten. The sense for the of children means no peer or unique. Okay. No one else like this. Okay. Jesus is unique. Okay. There is no other son like this. Okay. It doesn't mean that he was forgotten in a sense because he was uh, this channeled out. Jesus came on purpose. He had a purpose. God sent him on purpose for us. It was unique the way that he sent his son. The son of God became a man so that he would save us from our sins. The, on the former hand he preached of an incarnation of the fulfillment of the love of God on his desire to be present and live in the most humanity to walk in the garden with us, to be with us, just as if he was here himself. Jesus came to be called Jesus Christ, meaning the Jesus, the Jesus of the Messiah, Jesus the Anointed One. But later, Christians who believed that his crucifixion and resurrection fulfilled the Messiah's prophetic of the Old Testament. The Lord, our God, Yahweh, who saved, the Lord, our help, his name stresses his humanity. Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth. Angel tell Mary. She got a miracle, and so did her cousin. But even Elizabeth, her relative, was old. She was not in the area of her child age. She had been pregnant six months. But no word from God will ever fail. For with God, nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing is impossible. Mary's response is, I am the Lord's servant. 
May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Are you waiting on God to fulfill a word he gave you? May your word be fulfilled. He is still in the miracle business. Do you have the humble confidence that God can do anything and everything? Do you believe that he will act with others only see the obstacles in your way? Do you believe in miracles? Do you believe in the one that provides you with a miracle? For no word from God will ever fail. His word will never return unto him void. He honors his word. His word is his bond. There are scriptures in our New Testament that tell us when Jesus came that Jesus himself performed miracles, wonders, that left us to know that God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for our God. He can heal leprosy. He can heal COVID-19. He can heal your mother-in-law. He can calm the storm. Jesus can heal paralyzed people. Jesus can heal the dead and bring them back to life. Jesus can give sight to the blind. Jesus can take the ones who are dumb and make them smart. Jesus can feed 5,000 people. Jesus can feed 4,000 people. Jesus can walk on water. Jesus can get you to walk on water. Jesus can find things that you can't find. You ever lose your keys? You pray, God, help me find my keys. And Lord, the keys show up and say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus can help you find the keys. Amen. Jesus can help you. He can heal you. He can raise you. Jesus is still in the miracle business. Jesus had to come so that he could show us that God is still doing what he does. And he showed us to send in his only begotten son to the earth to show us the power and the authority that we too can walk in when we have a personal relationship with our God. When we have a personal relationship with our God. Jesus is still in the miracle business. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. I need a miracle. Yeah. I don't drive on miracles, but I know that God is in the miracle business, and if, if a miracle can be done, God will do it. Yeah. But if he did it before, he'll do it again. Yeah. And he's done it before. We've walked into car dealership and never had any money and walked out with a brand new car. Amen. And people say, how did that happen? We don't know. <laughs> but we know God did it because we didn't do it. And now we did it on our, on our own. I know I walked into places and I didn't have the insurance and they operated on me without the coverage. If the insurance company said no, but the people said, I'm going to write it up in a different way. Well, you're going to have that surgery. And I've had surgery and I can tell you, God is in a miracle business. God shows up when nobody else does. He may come a little longer than you might have. But the way, oh, he may not come when you want him, I say. But he's not on time. God is still in the miracle business. When you don't think that it's going to happen for you like it happened for her, Elizabeth, your cousin, is praying. Not saying you praying. You say pregnant with expectation. <laughs> but God is still in the miracle business. And I'm so glad about it. Aren't you glad? Yeah. So God wants us to not only share our miracles and have our miracles, let others know that He's done some things for us that we know. There's nothing to explain it. Yeah. Only God. Only God gets the credit for what has happened to us and some of the things that, that we know even today, unexplainable, but God, but God. Yeah. 
Here at Hope Church. I see some things and never saw one of them it's like you hope to. But God. Never really had you didn't have this word, but some was gone. But God, He showed up. And He's still showing up today because look at the building. It's beautiful in here. But God. God is keeping us. And I'm grateful. Aren't you grateful? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So we just dance our feet. I'm going to share uh, our God with those who don't know that he is willing, able, present, waiting for us, his children, to accept him as our Lord and Savior as we have not. This is the time that we look at our own hearts and our minds and we take a, a personal inventory. I do a Bible study on Facebook, but we take an inventory of our own life and we see where we are in our relationship with God. And if we have not accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, now is the time that we would. Raise our hands, say the prayer, the Lord sinner's prayer that God will forgive us for our sins and wash us white as snow, restore us and spirit unto us that we will be His and He will be ours. And that He will come into our life and be our Lord and Savior. We believe in our hearts and confess in our tongues. It's in Romans, we can stop them. God will be our Savior. Would you believe that He is your Lord and Savior? And you just believe that you can let someone know that here at Hope Church or another uh, Bible believing Bible teaching church in the area where you are, and you have people online. Um, go to Bible study. Go to Sunday school. I'm a true believer of learning the word. Learning who your God is. Learning what you believe now. And if you don't have a church home, what better church than whole church? Best church in the nation, amen? Better no better church. Whole church in Bible with New Jersey. The best church you can join. But there are other churches that you can attach yourself to. That a Bible believes in Bible teaching churches. So we really want that uh, we define a church home. And we say Bible believes in Bible teaching church. Uh, now's the time to raise your hand. We want Hope Church to be your church home. Amen? Yeah, thank you.